Have you ever thought about making your own fish and coral food for your marine tank? I have, and I've been doing it for the last few years. Not only does it save me money on buying fish food, it also gives me a huge supply of fish food. I make about a year's worth at a time, but most importantly, my fish and corals seem to benefit greatly from doing this. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how to do this and be successful so you can feed your marine aquarium with the food that you make yourself. So let's get into it. Some of the tools and equipment you're going to want to use are a food processor, a cutting board, a mixing spoon, a rubber spatula, a cutting knife, an aluminum pan, the one I'm using is about 22 inches by 12 and a half, gallon size freezer Ziploc bags, and some silicone ice trays. For the ingredients used in this recipe, several items I bought at the grocery store. Those include tilapia, raw shrimp, I buy the peeled, divined, and tail off, frozen scallops, and tuna. All these ingredients you want to ensure has no seasoning on them. Other ingredients I buy from Bulk Reef Supply for this recipe include calanus, mice's shrimp, dry rotifers, fish eggs, I buy two different kinds for the mandarin, reef roids, coral amino acids, amino omega, celcon vitamins, spirulina powder, and coral max, which you really don't need to use once I'm using the reef roids. One other ingredient that I did not include in this video that I normally use but I forgot is nori sheets. I like to cut up the nori into little squares and mix it in with the dry food to feed my tank. All of these ingredients you can customize to your tank. So for example, I wouldn't use nori if I didn't have tangs or other herbivore fish. I wouldn't use the reef roids if I didn't have any corals. And I wouldn't use the fish eggs if I didn't have a mandarin. So use whatever is best for your tank to feed your fish and your corals. There is no right or wrong way of how you can make this recipe. Once you have all your ingredients gathered, the first thing you want to do is start mixing up all of your dry ingredients. This would include cutting up the sheets of nori and mixing that in with the dry ingredients. Make sure it's well blended. One other thing that I did not do in this video because I forgot was I also like to mix my wet ingredients together in a separate container. As you can see here I did not do that and I mixed it in with the dry ingredients. Mixing the wet ingredients in separately helps blend it up more so all the wet ingredients are equally mixed. Once I have all my wet ingredients mixed separately from my dry ingredients that are combined, I'll pour my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients and then combine those two. Once those two are combined, I like to let them sit for about a half hour so the dry ingredients can absorb some of the wet ingredients. While that's absorbing, I start the food processor and putting all my frozen food into the food processor to get that all grinded up. I like to use the cheese attachment for like the cheese shredder. Um, when I put the frozen food in because it kind of blends it up really well um, versus using the chopper blade. As my food processor fills up, I will take my frozen ingredients and dump it into my aluminum pan with my other ingredients and continue to chop up more frozen ingredients. Some of the frozen ingredients you may need to cut with the knife. And if you do have to cut them with the knife in order to fit into your food processor, be very careful because with using a cutting board and something that's frozen, it can be very slippery and it's easy to slip and have a mishap with the knife. So please be very careful. Make sure your hands are clear from the knife blade. Uh, you can see I kind of I open up my palm over the top of the knife and push down, making sure my hands are free and clear from the blade itself. Once all your ingredients have gone to the food processor, it's time to mix everything well together. You want to blend it so it's one consistent color and texture. Once this is complete, it is time for packaging. So I like to use the silicone ice trays. I don't have enough to for all of this food, but I do like to use them because it's perfect if you're going away on a vacation and you're having someone watch over your tank, you can specify an amount of food for them to dose to your tank. For example, I could tell someone, give each tank three small cubes once a day or however you want to have it set up. 
Um, I also like using the big cubes. Sometimes um, I don't feed a whole big cube. I'll defrost some of it and probably feed half of it. Whatever I have left that doesn't fit in the silicone ice trays, I put into Ziploc bags. I use the freezer, uh, gallon freezer bags, and I put a couple scoops of food in there and I flatten it out so it's easy to break off. One other thing you can do as you're flattening out these Ziploc bags is you can kind of score the food that's in the bag with like the backside of your knife. This might make breaking it off a little easier. Uh, I've had some trouble trying to get a good score in there, so I usually just break it off with my hands. I don't want a package of the Ziploc bags too thick because it can make it very difficult to break off. So, um, so yeah, figure out how you want to package it. Get everything in the freezer frozen. If you're using the Ziploc bags, make sure they remain flat until they're frozen in the freezer. Um, this food usually lasts me around a year based off of how much I make and how much I am feeding. Um, so to go through this process once a year to have your own homemade fish food that you know is healthy, you know what ingredients are in it, uh, it's really not bad and I actually enjoy doing this. If you have any questions on the process or anything that I did in this video, please make sure to drop a comment. Let me know. I'll get back to you. Um, and again, customize this recipe to however is best for your tank. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.